So, hello. I guess you can hear me okay? I can hear myself okay. Let okay. me just check. I yep. Cool. So, hello. Welcome to Dark Days Radio. I am one of your regular hosts, Chris, and this is a quick kind of update on what things are going on, because uh, I've got some physical stuff to show you, and um, what we're doing at UK Games Expo. Uh, possibly I'll put in the links or I'll we'll see how I can link it on, um, on X, but mostly not because I haven't got it set up properly. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I'm mostly not going to be able to set it up straight away. Um, you know, stuff we've been painting, obviously, I can direct you to that. Um, but yeah, and also taking any questions. So, let's get started. I mean, this is a really quick kind of update. Things have been... Oh, busy, so I don't get to do these things as often as I like. I would hope to say in future these will become more regular. Um, I always say that, but hopefully they will become more regular. Right, so, now I have been publishing some things through the Storytellers Vault. So if you don't know what the Storytellers Vault is, uh, Drive Through RPG has numerous means for people to self-publish their own content, whether that's for... Dungeons and Dragons, you may have heard of the Dungeon Masters Guild, Dungeon Guild, something like that. Anyway, so the Storytellers Vault is the same kind of concept for World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness products. So that means there's a lot of resources on their templates for InDesign and Word so that you can build documents, very high quality documents, uh, with artwork that's appeared in World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness games for the Storytellers Vault, so you can sell your fan-made content. Now, uh, the Storytellers Vault then is available for all World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness games with some caveats. The caveats are, obviously certain games in Chronicles of the Darkness are only so far in their second editions, other ones are not yet. The other caveat is, if you want to publish stuff for v V5, you can't yet through the Storytellers Vault. And the, the final caveat is you can publish stuff, but of course, you've got to check that you've got the correct rights for any art you use. So if you use anything original, make sure you've got the rights to that. Uh, obviously, your friend is anything that's Creative Commons. And also, make sure... Uh, the other final, final last caveat is anything you publish, you will only make 50% of the uh, royalties on okay but you can do things where you can split up the royalties between yourself and your co-writers people that do the layout and so forth so i've been very happy by the response to things like the hunger within and uh venice on mass both of which are Chron chronicles of darkness the first one is a chronicles of darkness mortals one shots that's kind of very folk horror uh that's been downloaded like almost 30 odd times Venice on Mask is an entire setting book, like 130 odd pages, that has numerous NPCs and the full details of uh, the Venice setting for Changeling the Lost First Edition. So the rules in there, the rules for the characters, are not for Second Edition yet. So give me time and I will do so. But I need to, you know, really get Second Edition happy in my head so that I can update the characters. Now, speaking of that, I've been able to get hold of, using my royalties, second edition core books that I've been missing for Chronicles of Darkness. Uh, so let's go through a few things. Oh, I've got a big stack of books here. It's very heavy. Um, so let's, let's go from the beginning. Uh, okay, let's just order these in the right way. So I've had this one. For a while. This is the Chronicles of Darkness core book for second edition. Now this is, um, if you don't know what Chronicles of Darkness is, Chronicles of Darkness was the rebranding of what was called World of Darkness. So the classic World of Darkness, Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Mage the Ascension, all of those game lines obviously came to an end and then a new World of Darkness, a new envisioning of those concepts, new meta plot, well not really a meta plot, but new settings, new Law, new mysteries, new mythologies were created, new rule system. Then there was various things why CCP wouldn't allow there to be a second edition of the game. So Onyx Path put out 
a update called the God Machine Chronicle, which updated the World of Darkness rule set, the, the classic blue book World of Darkness, to what was called the God Machine Chronicles rule set. Then, with a buyout by uh, Paradox Interactive, they were allowed to finally call things second edition and rebrand. So the rebrand is to Chronicles of Darkness rather than World of Darkness, or what we were calling collectively as New World of Darkness. Now this is a print-on-demand book, so as you can see, full bleed, this is a premium print-on-demand, full bleed, and uh, what can we say? I mean, it's, it's as good as you can expect for print-on-demand, but I say good as you can expect for a book that was printed, ooh, I would say when it first became available, so this is almost three years old, this book. Um, and the paper quality isn't this kind of glossy, heavy, grade paper you would expect from a traditional print run. That in a moment. So let's put that to one side. What I have got recently are Vampire the, Mas uh, Vampire the Requiem 2nd Edition, Werewolf the Forsaken 2nd Edition, and Mage the Awakening 2nd Edition. So my, my uh, Storyteller Vault credits have gone to uh, a good cause. Now all, that means then I'm missing one book, which is going to be Promethean the Created 2nd Edition. Uh, everything else I have is uh, premium, which will uh, premium tr trad print run, which we'll get to. So this is to give you an idea of the quality of um, Requiem, full bleed premium. Okay, and uh, we'll find some. Let's find some proper big art. Uh, oh, that's that's good. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on with me. Oh, there we go. That'll do. So that gives you an idea, as you can see then. So because of the grade quality of the paper, it doesn't kind of have that r reflectivity that gets the stuff to punch out, uh, pop out of the pages in that respect. But, you know, for such a huge book, for print on demand, things have, things are, you know, this is like night and day compared to, you know, five years ago, six years ago. Um, drive through RPG is really, you know, hit out of the park. The great thing about these books, so I don't have to wait too long for them because print on demand means that these books can be printed pretty much anywhere in the world so long as Drive Through RPG has partners in the right parts of the world. So if you're doing, if you want print on demand in Europe, it's mostly going to be shipped from a printer in the UK at time of recording of this. Most probably, let's be honest, Brexit's going to change something, I bet. So let's have a look at Werewolf. Again, we've got, I really like the, qual the quality of Werewolf, I think comes out a lot better because I think it's a less confusing layout. Well, I say less confusing, less busy layout, let's just say. Uh, let's have a look at some of the full page artwork. You see this, because it's because it's this monochrome kind of art. Let's see if this is coming up on the screen. You can see that all right, can't you? Yeah, you see that monochrome art. It comes up really nicely. So I think there's, I think that's a message, an idea uh, for Onyx Path is to keep to the monochrome art more. I like the monochrome art. There's something about First Edition Requiem because it's all monochrome art. It just oozes kind of theme and mood. Uh, also, that's just a good example of text on a on a very dark background there, just to give you again the quality of the of the print and the bleed. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, onwards uh, and upwards. So we have got also uh, Mage, and again let's let's find a good page with some art and text. Oh, that's a good one. So again, less busy uh, layout compared to Requiem, which I think does it uh, does it favours. Uh, the blue monochrome art works wonders, and let's just say while I love Mage: The Awakening. First edition, what do we not have in this book? Gold text. Gold text was a bitch to uh, to to read uh, under certain light. Uh, let's see if we can find some. Oh, I really love this piece of artwork. Well done to Onyx Path and the artist in question. I don't know. You can tell me. I'm sure that looks fantastic, right? That's a really good piece of art. I again, this book's great. Um, I'm glad I've now got all three because, again, when 
Because because of how Chronicles of Darkness works, they all build off the same core system, and the thing that's really the 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 bones that strings together all of the weird creatures is things like the rules for ghosts, the rules for spirits are the same throughout all these game lines. It means you can mix and match them quite well, which of course will bode well for the Contagion Chronicle, which we'll get to a bit later. We'll talk about that. I haven't fully read all the updates that came through. I have backed it for just a PDF um, because it's one of those books which I think I'm not going to use as often as another book. So, you know, I've only got so much space on my bookshelf. Right, let's talk about Changeling. Now, Changeling the Lost, second edition. Can you see that glint shininess? Mmm, isn't that nice? So, that's what you get from a second edition book that comes through Kickstarter that's a traditional print run. So it is akin to its first edition version that came through stores. And it's just fantastic design. Um, really great new art in it. Again, you can kind of already see with the the print, it's exactly what you expect. That full bleed glossiness, it just kind of reflects off the page. Um, you know, the light bounces off it, and you can see things really nicely with it. Uh, let's try and find some good art. Um, something that I think really sells this book. Uh, yeah, I mean, while I'm looking for that, people can ask me questions. How many list, How many viewers? We've got three viewers. So we've got Varoth and Mr. Snowyak, the Island Painter. And then there's me. So, you know, that just shows what's going on. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find some interesting art uh, in here. <sighs> yeah, that's kind of cool. And gives you an idea of conditions and so forth. So it's a fantastic book, um, and I can't wait to get back into playing Change the Lost and running more of my Venice setting. So let's talk briefly about uh, the Contagion Chronicle. So the Contagion Chronicle is a way of doing crossovers with Chronicles of Darkness, uh, and it creates a new type of antagonist called Contagion, which can manifest via numerous means. Uh, and the book contains numerous ideas numerous settings, numerous crossovers where you've got, say, vampires working for, with Prometheans. And there's different groups uh, that you can belong to. They give you these powers, and those powers uh, are things you can utilise uh, whether you want to defeat the contagion or you want to utilise it for your own nefarious purposes. Uh, and what will be happening, if you don't know already, is at UK Games Expo, Onyx Path is running a Contagion Chronicle RPG tournament event. So what does that mean? What that means is there are five games being run. These games are Vampire the Requiem, uh, Werewolf the Forsaken, uh, Geist the Sin Eaters, Changeling the Lost, and I want to say Hunter the Vigil, but let me just check. I'm going to go to ukgamesexpo.co.uk. Then you go to events. Or, sorry, you go to events. You then go to role-playing events. And then in the little search bar, just type con, uh, co uh, conta contagion. Uh, uh, put, put chronicles. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, we've got Vampire the Requiem being run by Clara Herbal who's already worked on, uh, I've mostly pronounced that awfully. Sorry, Clara. Um, so she's running Vampire the Requiem. We've got Steffi Devan running Changeling Lost. We've got John Burke running Promethean, The Created. And we've got Chris Allen running Wealth of the Forsaken. And we have myself running Geist the Sin Eaters. Now, what's going to happen is that a player from each of those games will be vote, there will be a vote amongst the players for the best player of the group. There are wonderful prizes on offer from Onyx Path Publishing, and, a pl and that player will then go on to the evening session to play from 8 p.m. till 12 p.m. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit later, because the first games take place between 3 and 7. Anyway, so what you'll then be playing is the Contagion Chronicle crossover game, which will be run by Matthew Dawkins. So, 
all of these things have still got tickets available. Please take part. Please, please, please. Um, and the other thing I will say is that if you participate in the Geist the Scene Eaters Chronicle, uh, Chronicles Darkness event, you will go down as a playtester because Mike and I are writing this and we will publish it on the Storyteller's Vault. So I'm right now doing the history and setting stuff. Mike is working on the scenario. And it's been stuff that's been rattling around in both our heads for a very long time. And now we've got Guys the Sin Eaters 2nd Edition out on PDF for backers. And we're waiting for the book. means I'm absorbing the rules for that. So that's part one of what's going on at UK Games Expo. A very big part. And I'm very happy that Arts Path has got me involved in this. What's the next thing? The next thing is Darker Days Radio turns 10 this year, around about May time. So we're having a Darker Days Radio 10th anniversary meetup in the evening uh, while people are playing the Contagion Chronicle thing. So once they finish, they can come along and have a drink afterwards. So that's just a meetup for people who are fans of the podcast. Come say hi, have a drink, celebrate 10 years of Darker Days Radio. Uh, if you're into World of Darkness, come along. If you're into Chronicles of Darkness, come along. If you're into Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, come along. If you're into 40k Roleplay, come along. If you're into Iron Kingdoms, please come along to that as well. Uh, Fading Suns, another game I love and I've worked on. Um, and also, uh, what's the other game we've been playing that we like? Uh, Cult, please come along to that. And of course, Kingdom Death. Kingdom Death Monster fans, please come along to that. And if you're fans or know us through Beasts of War or on Tabletop, please say hi. It'll be great to see you and, you know, you'll meet new people and you can go, yeah, I listened to the podcast and I think they were talking shit when they said this about this or um, or they were totally right with their review or they were totally wrong with their review. But, you know, uh, I'll be there uh, and also I'll be joined by James because uh, everyone else is in the US. So if you want to meet up with the guys in the US, I'm sure there are going to be there'll be RPG events in the rest of the year which they will be attending and we'll find out when that happens. So, you know, you can have a another 10th anniversary meetup then. Or in the in Australia, because of course we've got Pete down in Australia. Um, Gen Con is obviously coming up as well, so Chig will be about hopefully there. Things like that. Uh, right, what else is going on at UK Games Expo? So, on the Sunday morning, on the Modifius stand, I will be running two two-hour sessions of... Vampire the, uh, Vampire, the Re- Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. So I'll be using a cut down fast play version of Make Blood Boil, which you can download free from Dark Days Radio. And uh, yeah, that'll be great to again, you know, show that Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition is actually a great game. Uh, and I do love it a lot. I have really enjoyed running it. Uh, okay, so what else is going on at UK Games Expo? There is one other thing which I'm not announcing yet. That's going to happen. You'll just have to stay tuned until later in the week uh, when I will announce news of that. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, it's quite the capstone for Darker Days Radio. Uh, yeah, just stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Right. L- less about UK Games Expo then and talk about the one other thing that we've got which once I finish reading Geist next on my list is this baby which I got sent which is Cult 4th edition so thank you to the guys at Helmgas so this is coming out properly released hard copy fairly soon general release I, I can't remember the full details I think backers have got this already Let's have a look at the book. Holy shit. Like, look at the level of this book. Like, again, gold text, (laughs) gold fonts on black. So it's not that bad. It's snazzy. Yes, it is snazzy. That is the term to use. It's Powered by the Apocalypse. Now, that's much like in the same way that City of Mist is is a Powered by the Apocalypse game. But I have to commend Colt and the writers for it because I finally grokking Powered by the Apocalypse. I think my problem is, and this is something that Chig and I were going to talk about um, in a podcast. Uh, it won't be this coming weekend we'll be recording. Mostly the weekend after, actually, I'd like to think. Um, is that 
a lot of the things that they they say the moves all those all those ideas like it's a move to talk to someone to converse with them to get information from them all those things those are things i take for granted and i don't consider move moves actions in other games they're just things you do in the course of playing so a lot of the things that kind of confused me when i first read city of mist and i thought oh this is really verbose this is really mechanistic is all these things that i take for granted that i just do naturally are are you know are written down as moves and i thought that's kind of weird and strange but i'm finally getting it with cult so i'm going to delve into this and the plan will be to run a hopefully run a one shot um in the near future hopefully right after uk games expo um and yeah, I'm really liking it. I, I can't wait to run it for my home game. Uh, we're wrapping up Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition soon with our Mordheim campaign. So we'll be maybe delving into this, perhaps. I've also got a 40k session to run as well to wrap up as well. The other cool thing I got uh, through these guys, obviously, with the cool... Look at these cool postcards. So, you know, what I might do is at... Um, is that UK Games Expo? I might get a whole load of. I might get some new. I'm going to get some new business cards and some Darker Days Radio stickers. And you know what? You can, if you say hi, and you say some nice things. Um, you might get one of these. I don't know. We'll think about that. I'm. I'm kind of. We'll see how that goes because I'm also also kind of like these. I wouldn't mind just putting them up on uh, on a nice uh, photo frame and keeping them. Right, so that's pretty much it. Um, let's see if we can do some, and if I can bring up something else. Uh, oh yeah, we can do that. So what I'm gonna do briefly is we're gonna just jump over to this head. Okay, hold on a minute. Give me a second. There we go. Can you hear me now? Cool, okay, so what I was saying, so I recently finished painting the Batman miniatures that I got from Night Models that are in resin. For, uh, and what we've got here is Two-Face and his goons that come in a blister pack. And I've also got uh, Poison Ivy and also the Gotham City Sirens. So uh, myself and James have been playing a bit of Batman, getting our head around the rule system. It's interesting, let's just say that. Um, it's very... There's a lot going on in the game. There's a lot of counters for actions and a bit of bluffing with the actions. It can get quite uh, over the top, I find, at times of what you have to do. And um, there's a lot of abilities, unique abilities on the models. So I don't find it the fastest thing to play compared to, say, uh, Necromunda, uh, the new edition, or, say, even Iron Kingdoms or other war games. Uh, I do like it. I do think it has a lot of theme and narrative. And I'm mainly collecting things uh, as they appear from like uh, the Arkham 
computer game series. So as you can see, all these designs are from Arkham. Uh, let's have a look at, at these if we um, with a few other stuff. So um, give you a sense of scale. Uh, so Killer Croc, that's an old metal miniature of Killer Croc. You can't get any more. Uh, and you can see the size of him compared to some of these, uh, to the rest of the uh, Gotham City Sirens and Two-Face. Uh, let's have a look at some other stuff. Uh, let's change the image over. Do, 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 do. Let's see that one. Yeah, let's go with that one. You get an idea of the size of Batman versus some of the other older models I've painted. So uh, what you've got here is uh, Killer Croc and those four goons with him are Blackgate prisoners, uh, which are also resin, those ones are, and they're new miniatures. And that's Batman and Arkham, uh, Arkham guards, and they're all resin as well. Uh, it's It does work. I mean, Batman feels like Batman. He chucks down gas pellets. He throws batarangs. He's uh, brutal in combat. Uh, and I think one of the things I really like about the game is, uh, let's think, what do I really like about the game? Um, so it plays on quite a small space, you can play it quite happily on a 3x3 three three space, uh, and illumination is the, main, is the main aspect of the game. So a lot of the things in the game can have uh, very long ranges that cover a lot of the board, but you can't shoot something unless you can see it. Now sight is limited to about 12 inches. But also you can see things if they are illuminated, so they're near what are called lampposts, and those lampposts have, have a four inch radius. So it gives you the idea of fighting at night. Um, and the other thing is with this this scene, with this, um, what really works with it is I really like using my Terraclips terrain. So I've got about six sets of this Terraclips. So this is the sewers. Um, and if you can find these, great because they're not in print anymore uh so i've got sewers i've got prisons uh a prison set i've got uh ruins and catacombs i've got the buildings and i've got streets and roadways so they're all for the malifaux game so they're all kind of kind of that victorian-esque feel to them uh which i think works quite well because if you think about parts of the arkham series of games you've got uh Old Gotham. Old Gotham will have kind of a Victorian feel to parts of it. Uh, you will have uh, the sewers will work really well because they're sewers. Uh, there are also the the buildings of Malifaux because they've got this kind of like um, wooden timber frame look to them. Look really good if you want to build something that's evocative and gives you an idea of say Wonder City in the second Arkham game. Uh, so there's things like that, and also the train I've been using as well uh, that I got from Necromunda from uh, from Wargames Tournaments. Uh, .co.uk. Um, that train is great for Necromunda, but also looks like the inside of Ace of uh, Ace Chemical Plant. So we get that kind of feel to it. I've got some new train coming along soon, uh, which is going to be some generic, very generic looking uh, buildings, um, which will use for a more modern downtown section of Gotham. Uh, but yeah, I want to play more of it. I want to try and get more of the system, uh, you know, locked down in my head. Um, there's, I think there's a sweet spot with points values to play, which is around about 200 to 2, 250. Um, so you really only got about three or four models aside. Uh, I think once you start going beyond that, the games take a lot longer to play. Uh, and there's, then you've got a lot more special characters and they've got abilities pinging off each other all the time. It just gets a lot to, to track. Right, so that's that. Uh, let's see if I've got any other pictures to show off on that front. Let's see, anything else? Do I have any last images? Uh, yeah, we'll just show this one off here. There we go. So this is um, Harley with uh, Joker and his goons like Paint of Age Go and of course Batman. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Right, let's head back to our main shot. So that's about it um, as an update. As I say, we'll have more news uh, coming up on what's going on at UK Games Expo. Uh, we're recording an episode soon uh, reviewing Geist, second edition. Uh, and that's about it for now. Obviously, um, 
If you want to learn more about Dark Days Radio, go to www.darker-days.org. Uh, go to Facebook, find Dark Days Radio. Go to Twitter, at Dark Days Radio. Go to Instagram, at Dark Days Radio. Go to our blog, Dark Days Radio, where James and I will start doing some blogging about what do we want to see at UK Games Expo? What's got us excited? There's a few things we're going to be catching up on again uh, to see what's going on, like Grimlord Games and their releases. Uh, we've also got... Uh, oh, there was something else. It's on to my tongue. <gasps> Parabellum and their war game, which is really good. I think it was Parabellum, yeah. Uh, then also, if you want to do us a favour, please leave a review about Dark Days Radio, either on Facebook or on iTunes. Please, it will... It just helps, and you know it's been ten years, and uh, we want to share the podcast with more people, and we want to do some more original content. Uh, we will do some more actual plays at some point. As I said, Cult is mostly on the top of our list. Uh, but that's it for now. Nice speaking to you. I hope you enjoyed looking at the cool shit, and I will see you soon. So see ya.